Hi friends, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multifarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here for another episode. Talk about a few of works in progress here and all kinds of fun stuff. So I hope you guys have a fun beverage or some time to just sit and knit and listen. Um, and we'll go through a couple things I've been working on. The sun decided to come out, which is quite nice. It's been raining quite a bit today, so that's nice. But anyway, we'll get into into it, shall we? So I'm working on some fun things. I know I haven't done a shop update in a while, but um, I will be working on some fun things for the shop coming up here. So it's going to take me a little bit to build up some inventory on something I'm working on, but... Um, I definitely will start posting about it and sharing with you guys. Um, definitely make sure you're signed up for the newsletter if you are not yet. Um, you can do so by either just messaging me or if you go on to um, multifariousnature.com, it should pop up. There should be a pop-up that asks if you'd like to be a newsletter subscriber. And definitely make sure you do that. I do not send out a lot of newsletters. I am pretty sporadic. I wish I could say I do it once a month, but it's probably a little less than that at the moment. My goal would definitely be to do it once a month, but I've just been a little sporadic about it. So I do not bombard you. Um, and I usually like to just say hi, uh, let you know some of the new things that are going on with Multifarious Nature, and if there's ever any discounts or deals, I do like to post it on in that newsletter. Um, I really like to do that. So it says a thank you for being a subscriber, um, supporting me in that way. I really appreciate it. And that's my way of saying thank you. So do make sure you do uh, subscribe if you want to find out about all those fun things, um, as well as new merchandise. So anytime there's new merchandise, I do try to let you guys know as soon as possible, especially the newsletter first. Uh, that's usually what I try to do. So definitely make sure you sign up for that. Otherwise, I think YouTube's the other best way to find out about um, new merchandise. I do not post the discounts on here. So just wanted to let you guys know that. And let's get into, I have finished objects. Oh my gosh, I haven't finished objects. <laughs> mostly finished, again, mostly finished. But I did, um, oh, I have to check something really quick regarding this pattern so I can speak intelligently. So bear with me. I am multitasking at its finest, right? Um, let me see here. My goodness. So first of all, let's see here. This isn't going to get me what I want. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I can find it. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I'm trying to do something here that I probably shouldn't do it this way. And I am learning this is not what I want to be doing because I am not even in my correct spot here. Oh my goodness. I promise. I'm, I will. Uh, I say I promise I'm not this disorganized, but um, unfortunately, it, <laughs> I have been really bad about um, doing some of this stuff. So bear with me here. Oh my goodness. I hope I can find it. Let's see here. And... Ah, here we go. All right, perfect. Now I can speak intelligently. Okay, thank you for your patience if you're still with me. I hope you are. You guys are great. <laughs> but these are two at a time socks that I knit up using my Multiverse Nature Advent. Like I said, they're mostly done. I did bind them off, um, but I did not block them yet, which I don't really block my socks, but I do like to wash them. But I did not do that. I didn't wash them yet, and I did not weave in my ends yet, so I need to do that. But... This is, I think this is the third, yeah, this is the third sock set for the Multiverse Nature Advent. Um, it's Silent Night. So pretty. It has this really nice taupe. It's 
semi-solid slightly tone colorway that goes with it but this is silent night and this is the two of the two at a time socks and the designer is let me see where i had it in here to be patricia campbell <laughs> this is my second two at a time socks and i'm just like cruising through them you guys cruising um i say like if I really committed to just working on these, it just takes me, it does not take me that long to make these. So for me, two at a time socks is the way to go. And this is a really pretty colorway. If you're looking for one, I think I still have one in the shop. This is the advent from last year. I did sock sets for each Sunday of Advent. It has the afterthought feel on here. And I did have enough. I had enough yarn, um, however, so with the contrast, heel, toe, and cuff, I would have to do less ribbing with this contrast color. Like that's to about two inches of ribbing, so that's a significant amount. But if I wanted to use it as the toe as well, I would probably need to make it just a hair shorter, but then I could just use more of the body colorway because I had more of it. So keep that in mind <laughs> when you're doing socks. These are tall socks too, by the way. And I probably still have about 50 grams of the main colorway because I did contrasting. And, but those are done. So that was super cool. So that is my one like finished object that I have. And then naturally I cast on another pair of socks because I told you guys I was going to be doing that now. I'm, I'm slightly addicted. It doesn't help or it does help. <laughs> it does help that I had one more sock set from my advent that I needed to knit up. So this is vintage Christmas sock set and I am doing the contrasting toes. So I'm going to be doing the contrasting toes, heels and cuffs on this one. Now that I know I can do that, I am also implementing. So thank you, Nancy. So, sorry. I, I, I've completely missed like placed your name in the past couple episodes, but I wanted to thank Nancy again on here. Um, Nancy is so amazing. So she actually posted about a tutorial, which I will share. I will link below <laughs> in the like more section of the video because it, it's really helpful. So it's a little quirky and it probably depends on the size of the button. So it involves a button. I'll show you what I got going on here, but it might be easier just to see the, um, the individual show you how to do it. But basically you use a button. This button is rather large, and I think that's where my problem is. Not the size here, but the holes. The holes are rather large. But you basically put, so I'm using, look guys, I did not separate it. I did not separate it, and I did not separate my mini skein either. So what I did is I just, you put one, your center strand through one of the holes, and then you put the outside strand of your ball of yarn, or cake of yarn, into the other one. Make sure they're coming out the same direction, and then you just knit away, and just pay attention to the fact that you just kind of want to flip back and forth. You don't want to keep going in a circle, or it'll, it, the twist will make its way down. And I have noticed that the twist will make its way past the button. It's not supposed to, it's only supposed to stop at the button. So I think I used too big of a button. I think that's my problem. <laughs> but it was so easy to like get the yarn through there. <laughs> but I think that's where I went wrong. Otherwise, it's a super easy trick. Um, I might not need to link the tutorial. I think I explained that well, I hope I did. But I'll link it anyway in case it helps you to, to see her do it. But you do, you literally just put one through each and then go to town. And it's been working really well. Like I said, it's a little finicky in a sense that if I don't pay attention and I twist it too many times, it does make its way to the other side of the button. So I just have to be a little mindful of that, but it's not, it's not terrible. And um, yeah, this is what it's looking like. So I, like I said, I'm doing from the center of the ball and the outside of the ball. And it's interesting how these socks are gonna look like, like, uh, cousins <laughs> because this one is getting a lot more of the darker variegation going on and this one has some of that like speckling of it 
but it's definitely leaning more on the light side, which is really funny how that works. So, but this is the, like I said, this is Vintage Christmas. This was the last colorway in the sock sets. It's super beautiful. I love this colorway so much. It has so many fun speckles. There are some like dark gray blues and like light, like some red and some orange and some browns. And it just, it, it was like, it was exactly what I wanted in one of the last inspiration photos for the advent of last year. Um, there's this beautiful photo of a woman standing in front of a, a Christmas tree and it looks like a vintage Christmas tree and she has this gorgeous sat like I don't know if it's satin but kind of a pink gown and it's so pretty and it reminds me a lot of the 50s uh, or 40s and 50s the way that they would uh, decorate their Christmas tree with the different ornaments my grandma had quite a few of those kind of pastel really beautiful ornaments so this definitely reminded me of that tree and it had the tree I think had like silver in it or something so I mean there's that's where the light like the kind of the, well the bare yarn basically um, is coming through in areas and that is that's part of that like glow and you see it in the photo like this oh I was so excited with how this turned out so that contrast color is that really beautiful soft pink like salmony pink and this is exactly like her dress <laughs> to me. I loved it so much. So this is definitely one of my favorite. I'm really excited to finish these. Um, I'm taking my time. I, lo I've, I love knitting socks at the moment and especially because it's so hot. Like today it's almost 90 degrees today. I think it's 89 Fahrenheit. So it's quite hot. It's very humid and I always eat my lunch out in my car and so I have my windows down. But I was able to knit on these and be okay because they don't make me hot like the sweater does because the sweater makes me really hot. So like I said, I've got my little 20 gram, now it's a little less than 20 because I made my contrast toe, but um, I'm going to make my contrast heels, the afterthought heels, and then I will also make the contrast ribbing at the top. And I probably, like I said, won't have enough to do the entire two inches at the top of the cuff with this but um I will do as much as I can and I may actually do striping do like I don't know five rows of this and then do a couple rows of the, the uh, main colorway and then I will do a couple more rows of this I think that's what I want to do it'll kind of give it that again that retro striping at the cuff I think that'd be really cute so yeah I hope you guys like it I love it. It's so much fun. And being this is a very speckled colorway, it is so much fun to knit. If you have not tried knitting speckled colorways, you are in for a treat. Definitely make sure you try some. I have lots of fun speckled colorways in the shop, um, but you, I mean, there are so many out there, but I'm a little partial. I absolutely love mine. So, so hop on over. There are definitely some in this shop. I mean, I could show you so many. <laughs> There's so many fun ones. I know like Kismet. I love Kismet. That one is so much fun to knit. So if you want a really fun peachy, um, especially since we're going into fall, I always feel like peachy, warm colors. Um, to me, those scream fall. But there are also other fun colorways that are not your typical fall. I'm just going to show you a couple here. Like Landscape. If you like greens, this is green with some blue speckles and some brown speckles and it's just, and some, yeah, there's like, I think there's orange in here too. It's just super beautiful. And so this would be really fun. And the speckles, they just make it so much fun. The other one that would be really fun to do for my yellow loving girls out there is Fields of Gold. This is really pretty. There's some um, like lavender speckles in here, the beautiful yellow, some golden yellow in here. This would be super fun too if you want. Um, a nice warmness, but I love a warmth. <laughs> I think these would be so pretty together. Um, doing fields of gold and landscape, I think those would be beautiful socks. And so it totally depends on your shoe size. Don't get me wrong. So I'm about an eight and a half shoe size is is what mine is. So for my socks, I could get two pairs of socks out of this. And the way I do this. Um, so for this is like, I don't know if it's a hack, 
it's, it's a hack to me, but uh, maybe others have already figured this out. It's totally fine if you have, but what you do is you use one of these as the contrast color, so the heel, toe, and cuff for the other one, and then vice versa. So for if you're doing like fields of gold for your main sock, this would be your contrast, and then in your other sock, you do the opposite. And so you'll have two socks that look similar, yet they're different, and yeah, you get two whole pairs of socks out of two skeins of yarn. What's not to like? So there you go. <laughs> There's your fun little hack that you probably already knew about. But I think those would make really pretty socks. Um, but I also have some other fun ones in the shop. I do have some sock sets if you're looking for sock sets. I've got a couple of them in the shop. Here's one of them. I think this is Sugar Plum Fairy. Very sure it's Sugar Plum Fairy. Super fun for my, my pink loving folks. And there's some purple speckles in there. Very fun. Get that one. I'm pretty sure I have a couple other sock sets in the shop. Oh, yeah. This one, which I actually have been working on that. I haven't worked on that sock since last Christmas, really. <laughs> but um, there's this one, which is a Christmas tree. Another super beautiful green, but this one has lots of fun speckles in it. Red and yellow. This reminds me of like my childhood Christmas tree. We had those really big lights that are, you know, your um, Christmas lights and stuff. Like, well, actually, I don't think we even used those. I don't know. In my head, I feel like we used the big ones once upon a time, but they probably were just little ones. But they are all those beautiful colors. You know, your blue, your red that um like white color as well and it's just so fun so this is definitely like my childhood christmas tree and then we've got bark like the contrast colorway and i know i have so many other ones oh gosh this one i want to make into a pair of socks so bad another christmasy pair of socks this was one of my new holiday colorways last year, and I was, I'm extremely proud of it. I was going to say I was. I am extremely proud of it. This is Ribbon Candy. Oh my gosh. I put it on my sparkling base here, and it has that gold Stellina in it. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love it so much. Yeah, 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Gold Stellina so pretty and the speckles just turned out amazing on here there's so many fun speckles and they're really crisp and oh i just love it so it's, it is um, definitely died after those beautiful ribbon candies those are kind of a vintage thing as well uh, a bit of a theme going on i love the 40s and the 50s and ribbon candy is a big thing so there you go. If you want to snag one of these, I do still have a couple in the shop. And yeah, super fun. I'm thinking of like the holidays already. Can you believe it? I'm trying not to think of the holidays. To be honest, that just looking at these right now made me think of the holidays. <laughs> Otherwise, I've really been thinking about fall. Not in the sense that I want to decorate my house for fall. Not quite yet. I'm not really there. But I do want to um, start knitting things for fall, like fall-oriented knits, which gets me into my next knit that I've been working on, which I did talk about in my last video. And that is an Andrea Mowry pattern, one of my favorite designers, which actually today I'm recording this is Thursday, the 1st of August, and it's actually Andrea Mowry's birthday. So happy birthday, Andrea. I don't think she's going to watch this video. I love her patterns, if you haven't noticed. And because she's super awesome and she gives us extra deal during her birthday. So if you are not a newsletter subscriber of Andrea Maori, definitely make sure you do that. She sends out amazing discounts, especially on her birthday. It's a really great discount. So I may have snatched up one or two more of her patterns. I know, I can't help myself. It's such a good deal and I love her patterns and they fit me really well. So when you find a designer that their patterns fit you really well, it's hard not to keep buying from them. <laughs> anyway, I hope 
you don't mind. <laughs> so the pattern that I'm working on is her framed sweater, which is her Rhinebeck sweater this year. For those of you that might not be familiar, Rhinebeck is a, it's the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. It's a huge fiber festival that occurs every year in October. And a few designers, um, Andrea Maury is one of them, will like design something for Rhinebeck. And then they try to have a knit along so that, which I'm participating in the knit along, but the knit along is so that a bunch of um, folks can make this design. And then the goal is to meet up on the hill in Rhinebeck, New York, and everybody's wearing their sweater or whatever the item is. Um, I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm not going to New York, but I'm participating because I think it's so much fun. It's great to cheer each other on and that kind of thing. So, and it's really fun to see what other people are doing. So this one is mine. I have some hand spun in it. I have one of my hand dyed colorways. Um, it's called Cherry Hill. One of the new fall colors that's going to be coming out. So that's Cherry Hill. I have it dyed up on my Merino Alpaca base. So it's 20% super fine alpaca and 60% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It's so stinking soft and it's got, it has amazing drape. I'm holding it double because the pattern's technically worsted weight. However, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm slightly nuts, I think. So... <laughs> This is worsted weight, basically, because it's fingering held double. But then the body is technically, like, flirting between sport weight and worsted weight because it's hand-spun. So one of the main colors is my CVM fleece that I'm spinning up. So I have made, like, two and a half skeins, and then I've got one skein that I'm currently trying to spin up. That should be my last one, I think, for it. Um, but it's beautiful. It's a gray CVM, California Variegated Mutant, for those of you not familiar. Super soft, super fluffy. Here it is, skeined up as well, so you can see what that looks like. Super fluffy. This one's definitely more worsted. So <laughs> this one was more fingering. So I'm going to kind of hold some of these double, and then the others I'll hold single. And it's going to be a total experiment, but I'm loving it. And... Then I am working with one of my favorite Michigan um, mills here. Um, it's Stonehenge Fiber Mill. They do crazy yarn and it is a dyed in the wool spun yarn. And so I'm using that as the one that kind of changes throughout. And then here's the two other ones that I'm gonna be using as well. And here's the other one. And currently I am in the black section, which makes for excellent contrast. So, just so you can get an idea, if you're not familiar with Crazy Yarn, this is what it looks like so far. So, we went from initially being like a green and blue color, and then it's faded to a kind of gray-brown color and peach, and then it faded into peach and black, and now we have the black, which is just black. She had a section that was just black which is really cool because it gives an excellent contrast to the gray CVM. And I think that helps the pattern stand out more. You can see the quilt squares here, but I feel like this is a lot more subtle where this is going to be a lot more of a stark contrast as well as some of these others. Like I feel like that's going to be a really beautiful contrast as well. So I'm super excited. I am loving this so much and best news ever. I tried it on. So, so um, I told you guys that I did not swatch for this. I was really bad. I was a very bad knitter. I did not swatch for this, and it's a sweater and it's color work, which is like really risky. Um, color work is notorious for obviously not stretching a lot, and it could be a disaster sauce, especially since, I mean, I'm doing stranded color work, and then it's like kind of sport weight-ish. So, I mean, it, uh, it's really risky since the pattern is more of a worsted weight. But anyway, um, I tried it on. I've used my, like, uh, try-on cords that I have. And, you guys, it fits. It fits. I'm so excited. And I'd say the ease is definitely around, like, four inches or so of ease, which I know she recommended, I think, four to ten inches or something. 
of positive ease, so that is going to be great. I'm going to have to pay attention to my arms when I get to the armhole area, because in her past pattern, with a similar like armhole construction, it was a little snug. So I'm going to have to pay attention to that because I might have to adjust accordingly. But I'm really excited. I think it's looking so nice. <laughs> and it's so much fun to knit. I haven't done a bunch since the last time we spoke. Because like I said, it's been really hot out. And I do like to sit outside and knit. In the morning, it's not as big of a deal. It's cooler. But yeah. Anyway. Making progress slowly but surely on that and loving it. So that leads me, again, I talked about Andrea Mowry. Like I said, um, she has a big sale going on right now. So if you are a newsletter subscriber of hers, definitely check your newsletter because there's an amazing discount, which is why I picked up a few more. <laughs> but if you're not a newsletter sus let her subscriber, definitely go over to her Instagram. Um, I think if you go to her YouTube, it's... I'll knit if I want to. If you go on there as well, I think she shares the discount. It's not the same discount as what's in her newsletter. The newsletter one is a much steeper discount, but it's still a really nice discount. I think it's 25% off, which is awesome. So that's off of all of her patterns that are self-published. So she does have a few patterns that I think she published in magazines, um, primarily from a while ago. And those, I don't think you can get the discount on those because they, she doesn't like hold full ownership of them. I guess that's what it is. But the majority of her patterns, you get 25% off. And it's for like a week. So that's awesome. Totally non-sponsored. I just love supporting individuals that, you know, one small business. And I really enjoy Andrea's like videos and everything. She just um, is a very positive light and... Uh, always willing to share information and um, her knowledge. That's part of I'll Knit If I Want To, her YouTube. So if you haven't ever checked them out, definitely do so. She shares so many tips and tricks. And um, if you have questions, you can ask her a question and she'll answer it in a next, like in, maybe not the next, but in a coming video, like in the future. So yeah, total wealth of knowledge. Little fly got in here. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that out. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. Are you guys doing any fall knitting? I'd love to hear from you. For those of you that responded to pe the past video, thank you for sharing your gratitude. I think I'm gonna do that again this week. Um, if you want to share something that you are grateful for today, that would be awesome. Um, I think it's really important to focus on things that you are grateful for because there is so much pain in the world. There is so much negativity and, um, and I think it is important to realize like, you know, that, you know, bad things happen to lots of people, you know, they do and, but good things do too. And so I think it's really important to focus on the good things when you can. It's okay to mourn and obviously, um, deal with, with that. That is important as well. But, um, I do think it's also important to realize there are things that are positive and there are things to be grateful for. So, um, just off the top of my head here, um, something that I am grateful for, that I am grateful for our health, my family, um, my family and my, and my health, and that includes our animals and we are all healthy. And that is a, definitely a blessing. That is a very great thing. I am quite grateful for. And, um, yeah, so if you'd like to share in the comments below what you're grateful for, I would love to hear from you. It means so much, and it's always nice to hear um, other things that people are grateful for. Anyway, yeah, I think that's it for this week. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to share. Oh, there is. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost forgot. So it's still a little ways out, but if, I mean, it's not that far out. I think it's like two weeks. I'm gonna look at my calendar here. Bear with me. If you're still with me, thank you. <laughs> but all right, two weeks. Uh, yeah, like two weeks from now. Is this the, I think it's the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. I really focus on the 16th, 17th, and 18th um, because the earlier days are workshops and I don't ever go to the workshops just because, well, I, I'm at work. But um, yeah, Michigan Fiber Festival. 
that's in Elegant, Michigan, and that is um, the weekend of the 16th, 17th, and 18th. So if you live in the area, definitely check it out. I think it's $5 to get in. It's very reasonable. And um, that is for the day. Otherwise, I think, I'm trying to remember here. I think it's $5 for the day, but if you buy a weekend pass, I think it's $10, and that gets you through Sunday. So uh, it's totally worth it. If you plan on coming Friday and Saturday, definitely get the weekend pass. It's a great deal because, I mean, if you happen to, <laughs> to go there Sunday as well, then it's a great deal. Otherwise, I guess it doesn't really make a huge difference. But I do the weekend pass, and I, I, uh, I usually... I used to only do Saturday, but um, I've been going on Friday and Saturday, and it's so much fun. If you are, which I would assume a lot of you are, but maybe you're not, if you are more of an introverted person, it's a lot of fun to go Friday. It's quieter. It is so much quieter. I'm sure Sunday is quiet too, but Friday is a lot quieter. Um, it's just, it's fun. You get to see everybody set up right away. You get to see everything before it gets... Um, picked over a little bit. I feel like everybody at Michigan Fiber Festival brings a very large inventory with them, which is awesome. So I have yet to encounter someone that like completely sold out of like everything, um, which is really good. And there's so much variety and it, it's just so much fun. There's good food, there's live music. Um, I've never been to Rhinebeck and I know Rhinebeck's bigger, but that's the nice part about Michigan Fiber Festival. It's still really nice, and it, there's a lot there, but it's not so enormous that you can't be there all day. I mean, maybe some people wouldn't want to be there all day, <laughs> but I easily spend all day. I went, last year, I went Friday and Saturday, and I spent, like, the majority of the day Friday and definitely all day Saturday. It's so hard not to. Because Saturday is when they do a lot of, like, the event stuff. So I don't know about you guys. If you went last year to Michigan Fiber Festival, if you saw the sheep shearing, can you please let me know where it took place? <laughs> because I tried my absolute hardest to see where the sheep shearing was. I also wanted to see the, the sheep dog demonstration. And I have no idea what went down because I could not find either. <laughs> I did see the Angora goats. Though, I did see them get shorn so that was cool but I did not get to see the sheep and I really want to see sheep I, I mean I like seeing it anyway but I really want to see it because this year I have to shear sheep so it helps to see people doing it in person I see it on videos but it's like extra helpful to see it in person I think okay so yeah Michigan Fiber Festival don't miss out it's such a fun event if you live nearby um, or close enough that you could do like a day trip or like weekend trip. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so worth it. It is so worth it if you're fiber lovers. And I mean, they have everything there. There's yarn, there's fiber, like if you want to do spinning, felting, weavers. Ugh, it's so much fun. It is so much fun. So definitely check it out. Go over, I think it's Michigan Fiber Festival dot com just google search michigan fiber festival you'll find the link heck i'll include the link down below in the notes section so definitely check that out it there's a list of all the vendors you can a lot of them have websites so you can go to their website kind of see what they're about uh, it's just it's amazing it's so much fun and not to mention the animals oh my gosh the animals all the sweet little sheep and goats and did i mention sheep the bummer is that I don't think they have the alpacas there anymore. There's a new festival that is, I think it's new, I don't know. It might have been around for a bit. It's the alpaca festival, which is earlier in the year. It's when it's cooler. So, yeah, there's that. Um, so it's separate. They used to have the alpaca at the Michigan Weber Festival. But to be fair, it gets a lot, I mean, it's it's usually pretty hot in August Michigan Fiber Festival the past couple years it has been hot so yeah it's brutal for the alpaca and it's probably not great for the sheepies or anything either but uh, you know 
they're they as long as they can lay down and chill and have access to water, they're happy little critters. But anyway, Michigan Fire Festival. Okay, I think that's it. And life update end of things. I'm trying to think if there's anything else really life update to add. Washing a lot of fleeces, still doing that, which is why I've got my little get up. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't think there's really a lot going on otherwise um, that I need to share about really. But yeah, I think that's about it. So um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I look forward to catching up with you soon. Take care. Bye.